Hey guys, how are you guys doing? Welcome back to another video on my channel. Today, I wanted to go ahead and give you guys the blueprint on how you can make your first $100,000 in revenue for your Shopify dropshipping store using Facebook ads. Now, this store right here was just shy of $92,000, but it was almost there at 100K. So we're gonna go ahead and make it count. But this store, we'll go ahead and do a refresh so you know. And as you can see, it refreshed. Our highest day was $16,000. And I actually wasn't doing too well in the beginning. As you can see, we even descaled a bit before we figured out how to go ahead and scale this store up all the way to $16,000 in revenue. Now, during this video, I'm also gonna go ahead and show you this ad account that we spent $65,000 on and was able to generate a tracked revenue of 115K. Now, the actual revenue was closer to like 130, 140K. But as everybody knows, Facebook under tracks a lot. So we will be going ahead doing a deeper dive into this ad account. Everything will be unblurred, doing a day-by-day -day analysis on how we were able to go ahead and go through, number one, the testing phase. Number two, how to get out of the testing phase into the scaling phase. Number three, how to do retargeting. And number four, just extra steps needed. We went ahead to scale this store up from literally zero all the way up to its first 100K in revenue in just a few weeks time. Two weeks, three weeks, as you can see, November 6th to November 24th was how much time was needed to generate at least $115,000 in revenue. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started. The first things first that you need are gonna be something called KPIs or key point indicators because in order for us to understand what our testing campaign means, you have to go ahead and read some terms. So I wanna go ahead and go through how we can go ahead and set up columns so you understand what you're kind of reading and what information Facebook is giving you. So first things first, go to your Facebook ads manager, go to columns right here. First thing you wanna do is click customize columns. As you can see, these are kind of like the default columns that Facebook gives you. I wanna go ahead and tailor this to our own liking. So first things first, I'm gonna click X on bid strategy, last significant edit, attribution setting is gone, reach, impressions. I'm just getting rid of the stuff that I usually don't look at. As you can see, Facebook has a lot of key point indicators for you, uh, but unfortunately you don't need everything. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and keep it simple. Quality ranking, engagement, conversion, all can be gone. Turn off this as well. Um, so this is what we have left. And I might wanna go ahead and edit it later on, but first things first, I wanna do CPC. I always wanna go ahead and choose a second one, not this one right here. You wanna choose calls for a link click and not all. So go ahead and choose that. I'm gonna go ahead and move it up next to the budget. The next thing I wanna go ahead and take a look at is CPM. Go ahead and check that as well. Move it up to under CPC. And then I wanna go ahead and start adding our buying pressure KPI. So add to cart, initiate checkout, and obviously purchases or sales. So go ahead and do add to cart. Go ahead and click total. And I wanna go ahead and uncheck this right here. The next thing you want to do is initiate checkouts. Go ahead and do total as well. Uncheck that right there. And you might have more boxes. Uncheck all of them. It doesn't really matter and we don't really need it. The next thing you want to do is do purchases. And the next thing you want to do is purchase row ads as well. And go ahead and uncheck these as well. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is click apply. Go here. Click save. I'm going to name my preset YouTube video because I'm making a YouTube video and that is going to be our preset. Now, sometimes things might change and sometimes it might be different in the video, but this is basically the generic way we're looking at things. And this is basically it right here to set up the columns or your KPIs. Now that you know that, let's go ahead and start setting up your testing campaign. The reason why you have a testing campaign is because you wanna go ahead and do a low budget spend on a specific product and basically just start testing different groups of audiences that may relate or may buy the products. You don't wanna go ahead and go to Facebook and start spending thousands of dollars a day if you don't know who is trying to buy the product. That means for our testing campaign, we are gonna go ahead and testing different audiences or interests. So the first thing you wanna do is click create. I always go ahead and click sales, so click continue. And now you always wanna go ahead and click manual sales campaign. The first one could be good for scaling, but we wanna go ahead and do manual because we want to let Facebook know who to target. Go ahead and click continue. First things first, the campaign. I always like to do testing campaigns so we know what kind of campaign this is. Go ahead and scroll down. This is fine. Go ahead and click next. This one right here, the ad set name, we are gonna go ahead and delete this for now. So there are no ad set names for now. We will come back to this. Second thing, go to website. You always wanna choose maximum number of conversions. Scroll all the way down as well. Right here, you wanna go ahead and create a pixel. We're not gonna do it because obviously this is a tutorial video, but you wanna go ahead and create a pixel. Make sure it's connected to your Shopify store and select the pixel. Before we continue the video, I want to go ahead and give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Dot Store Domains. 
when you first start a Shopify store, you're not gonna have a domain and it's gonna go ahead and give you something like groomingdogbrush6355.myshopify.com. Obviously, no one is gonna remember that when it comes to that domain. So instead, you need a simple and short domain such as pupbrush.store. Now, it'll be very obvious what your website is about when you have a .store domain. And that's what .store does for you. It makes it obvious for your customers to figure out that your website is a .store and a place where they can go ahead and buy things. Even Mr. Beast, Ronaldo, Michelle Obama, and a million others are on board with this. Actually, in fact, Mr. Beast actually changed his store from a .com domain to a .store domain because actually it helps him stand out as an online store. But that's not it. The word store is simple and people love using it when it comes to searching to buy stuff on Google. A year-long independent study data clearly shows that online stores with a dot .store domain have seen increases up to 87% more customers visiting their stores organically and even up to 12% less in CPA costs on ads. It's pretty clear to say that it pays to be a dot .store domain. You can literally grab this awesome deal from anywhere, Namecheap, GoDaddy, Shopify, but if you want to go ahead and get a special deal that dot .stores offer my viewers, go to the link down below, use the promo code ANDREWSTORE, you can go ahead and get your first dot .store domain for just 99 cents for your first year. So if you have a Shopify store on a .com domain, or if you have a Shopify store that you haven't had a domain name yet, just go to the link down below, get yourself a dot .store domain for just 99 cents for the first year by using the promo code ANDREWSTORE. But thank you dot .store domain for sponsoring this video. Let's go ahead and continue with the video. Once you select the pixel, it's gonna ask you what kind of conversion event you want to go ahead and choose. Always choose purchases. Anyway, scrolling down, for our daily budget, we're gonna go ahead and do $10. The start date, you wanna go ahead and choose the very next day at 12 a.m. The reason why we start at 12 a.m. is because Facebook does a 24 hour schedule. That means it's gonna go ahead and try to spend as evenly as possible throughout the 24 hour schedule. For example, if you start at 9 p.m., it's gonna go ahead and try to spend your entire budget within three hours. Usually it's inefficient and it will go ahead and decrease your performance by a lot. So you wanna go ahead and start at 12 a.m. whatever your local ad account time is. Mine says Eastern time, but if yours is any other time Pacific, it doesn't really matter. Just do 12 a.m. whatever your ad account is. Go ahead and scroll down the locations. I always do United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, as you can see right there. And then next thing you wanna go ahead and do is switch to original audience. So go ahead and do that. Facebook's gonna ask you, do you wanna use the Vantage Plus audience? You don't wanna do it, go ahead and use the original audience. Scroll all the way down. And now I don't really wanna mess with the age and genders too much unless your product is specifically meant for a girl or a guy. Obviously, if you're selling like a makeup brush, you wanna choose girls only. But majority of the products, if it's not you know gender selective, just go ahead and choose all genders. You want to go ahead and choose something that relates to your product. If you're selling like a fitness product, you might wanna go ahead and do physical fitness. As you can see, physical fitness shows up. You wanna go ahead and click that. And then the next thing you wanna do, add exclusions. Now, I don't know if this really matters or not, but I've been doing this since I started drop shipping, and it's been working pretty well for me, but I exclude people that like AliExpress and I exclude people that are drop shippers. So my ad will usually not show up on their Facebook page. Now, like I said, I don't really know if it does anything cool, but I went ahead and did it anyways because I've been doing it, so it's fine. You wanna go ahead and leave Advantage Plus placements on. So yeah, that's basically it for the ad set level. We're gonna go ahead and scroll over here, copy physical fitness, and go up here and paste it onto here. The next thing is gonna be uploading your ad, but unfortunately, we're not gonna go ahead and do all that today. Basically, just upload your creatives, go ahead and add a description, add a title, do whatever you need to do. That is for another video. Today, we are talking about the blueprint and the KPIs and how to go ahead and scale your store. So we're gonna go ahead and skip that today. But yeah, anyways, that's basically what I do to set up my first ad set. As you can see, physical fitness. The next thing I wanna do is set up nine more ad sets that are related to physical fitness. So you wanna go ahead and click duplicate, click duplicate again, and then you wanna go ahead and scroll all the way down, click suggestions, and then go ahead and click the next 10 interests that make sense. So physical exercise, health and wellness, weight training, strength training, CrossFit, all these kind of relate to physical fitness. So you wanna go ahead and choose these interests. So let's just go ahead and say we wanna do health and wellness, so you'll click that. You wanna to remember to remove physical fitness out of the equation. Go ahead and copy this, scroll all the way up and then paste it here. And then you wanna go ahead and click publish. And as you can see now, we have two ad sets that are related to each other. You wanna do this eight more times and choose different groups of people, even though they may be all related to your products because you wanna know what kind of people want to buy your product. And that's exactly what we did uh, for the testing campaign that I have set up. Anyways, now that you know how to set up the testing campaign, 
we can go ahead and get started with the blueprint, including the KPIs that we have up top. So let's go to the very first day we started running this product. So November 6th, as you can see right here. Now, before we go ahead and keep talking about how we keep scaling the store, you're probably wondering, how are we going to go ahead and fulfill these orders that we're getting for our store? And that's where the sponsor of today's video comes into play, AutoDS. Now, if you don't already know, AutoDS is basically an all-in-one platform that helps you import products and also fulfill them for you. There's also something called Fulfilled by AutoDS. And basically, they take care of all the orders for you automatically. All you get to do is sit back and relax, and they basically fulfill an order as soon as it comes in. Even when there's a return, all you have to do is go ahead and click a simple button to go ahead and start a return process. Not only do they go ahead and import and fulfill products for you, they also have their own sourcing and private supplier to help you get the cheapest rates and also the fastest shipping lines. All you have to do is request a sourcing request on any of your products and the auto DST will get back to you within 24 to 48 hours with your quotes. They also have a page in the system available for you to go ahead and track all of your orders, whether or not they have been fulfilled or they haven't. And they also have multiple tools and sections to show you winning products so you can go ahead and get inspiration for your next winner. So if you want to go ahead and get started with AutoDS to help you import, fulfill, and also maybe find a winning product, go to my link down below and get a free trial of AutoDS. And let's go ahead and get back to the video. As you can see, we spent around $105 and we got back $184 in sales, which is pretty profitable. Now let's go ahead and do a deeper dive into our testing campaign. So as you can see right here, amount spent, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 interests, all spent around $10 each, exactly like what I told you. As you can see, all these interests make sense for each other. There's dog grooming, dog parks, dog food, basically everything related to dogs, but it doesn't 100% mean that they are all the same types of people. But as you can see, the very first day, we spent around $100, got back $184, so we were profitable that day. Um, anyways, going to see here, we didn't really want to do anything here because as you can see, some of these ad sets got one sale, one sale, one sale. For me, it's not enough to go ahead and bring it over to a scaling campaign just because it has one sale, it could have been lucky sales. Now for the testing campaign, you wanna go ahead and look at your data lifetime. Now, the requirements to go ahead and scale on interest would be two to three plus in purchases and two plus in ROAS. Now, if you're wondering what ROAS is, you wanna scroll all the way to the right, and this is basically your ROAS. Basically, for every dollar that I spent on this campaign, I got back $5.90 on average. This one, $5.53 on average. So if I spent $100 with a five row eyes, I should have gotten back $553. Anyways, this is the metric that we're looking at the most right here, row eyes. And that's really important because you want your row eyes to be above your break even row eyes. If you don't know what your break even row eyes is, make sure to go ahead and check out this website called the dropshiptoolkit.com. Put how much you're selling your product for, put how much you're getting your product for, it will tell you what ROAS is needed to go ahead and break even on a product. For this product specifically, my break even ROAS was 1.5. Anything above a 1.5 means I am profitable. As you can see, overall, I was profitable at 1.75. Some of these interests are really, really profitable. Anyways, getting these results, as you can see, one sale each. I did not do anything with these ad sets, but as you can see, I had a lot of add to carts and checkouts initiated. I had a lot of buying pressure. That means right here, 27 people, 12 people have went ahead and actually added it to cart and put in their information in the checkout. It just seems like they didn't want to go ahead and purchase. So that means I am not killing any of these ad sets today. Usually if you spend around $10 on an ad set and don't have any ads to carts or initiate checkouts, you want to go ahead and kill it just because $10 should have been enough for it to get at least one ad to cart or one initiate checkout. But for us, all of our ads basically had at least one ad to cart um, and some of them had purchases. So I went ahead and left everything on. So November 6th, going on to November 7th, as you can see, the very next day, we actually got a total ROAS of 2.26. Now, as you can see, some of these campaigns here have started getting sales. Right here, two sales for dog walking, one sale for dog, one sale for dog parks. But remember what I said in the beginning, your testing campaign should be looked at over the lifetime. So the lifetime of this campaign so far has been two days. As you can see, sorting by purchases, you can see that dog food, dog parks, dog walking are really, really good. They have basically gotten the two plus row eyes that we needed. Also, they have gotten at least two purchases, which is the minimum requirement to go ahead and scale a campaign. Anyways, looking at it here, I went ahead and scaled two of these campaigns, dog food and dog parks. I did not go ahead and scale dog walking just because I like to go ahead, do at maximum two CBOs when it comes to scaling. Anyways, let me go ahead and show you what exactly you have to do in order to scale an ad set that's doing really, really good 
in the testing campaign. So going into our test account over here that I made in the beginning, let's just say physical fitness is doing really, really well. And if you want to go ahead and scale it because it has at least two to three purchases and it has the two ROAS, you want to go ahead and click duplicate, click new campaign. I'm going to go ahead and name it physical fitness CBO. And you want to go ahead and do three copies and then go ahead and click duplicate. Now, once you do that, you also want to go ahead and click physical fitness CBO. Scroll all the way down here and turn this on. It's called Advantage Campaign Budget. You want to go ahead and turn this on and set this to at least $100 for the very next day. When I mean the very next day, I want you to go into every single ad set, scroll all the way down and make sure the date is starting the next day at 12 a.m. Make sure every single ad set, all three of them are starting the next day at 12 a.m. Trust me, you don't want to start a campaign at 9 p.m., 6 p.m. or in the middle of the day. It's going to go ahead and spend your budget really inefficiently. Anyways, that's basically how you create a CBO and it's exactly what you want to do when you want to go ahead and scale a specific interest because the testing campaign is meant for testing only. Anyways, going to November 8th, as you can see, we actually have three campaigns that are running. As you can see, Dog Park, Dog Food, and the testing campaign have spent some sort of money. Dog Park CBO, as you can see, only got a 0.56 ROAS. Dog Food CBO only got a 0.76. Now, just because it's working really, really well in a testing campaign, it doesn't always mean that will do good in the scaling campaign. Remember, sometimes scaling campaigns might take a little bit more data in order to go ahead and scale, or those sales from dog park and dog food in the testing campaign could have been lucky sales. But anyways, we can't control that. We already know that they did good in the testing campaign. We tried CBOing them. They gave us basically half the money or 75% of the money we, we spent on ads. So it is not profit considering that the break even rose for this product is 1.5 and we got back 0.56 and 0.76. Anyways, the testing campaign was still profitable. It was at a two ROAS. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Also, another thing that I did is that since the testing campaign was doing so well, what I went ahead and did was that I added a few more ad sets or a few more interests related to the ones that were working. So for example, let's go back to November 7th right here. Click amount spent. As you can see, I spent a hundred dollars like usual. Let's go ahead and check all of these off. So we know exactly which interest we had originally. And then I went ahead and added these interests over here. Pet smart, golden retriever, German shepherd, pet co puppy. These new interests were added because since the original 10 were doing so well in the testing campaign, I wanted to go ahead and try a few more related to them. So exactly how you start off with 10, you want to go ahead and add three to five to eight more new interests that are related to the ones that are working because since they're working, the suggestion is going to go ahead and suggest an interest that may work as well. That's why I added some new interest and the very next day, that's why we spent in total $194 in a testing campaign. And now we have some new interest that are also getting some sales. Anyways, let's go ahead and go look at the lifetime here. And as you can see, sorting my purchases, dog food, dog parks, dog walking, all of these are doing really, really well. I remember the day before I didn't go ahead and CBO dog walking. Well, I'm definitely going to go ahead and do that now for the very next day. So dog walking should become a CBO for the next day. As you can see, two purchases at a 3.75 ROAS. I am profitable. I already CBO dog parks and dog food and they are CBOs. So we'll go ahead and see how they do the very next day. As you can see, November 8th going into November 9th. As you can see, now we have three CBOs still, dog food, dog park, and dog walking. Unfortunately, dog walking did not do well at a 0.41 ROAS, and dog food also did not do well at a 0.57 ROAS, but dog park actually ended up doing pretty good. Now, remember the day before, dog park actually did not do that great. So let's go ahead and take a look at it again. I basically didn't do anything to it. I went ahead and left it on because I don't want to go ahead and kill it off too early because it did go ahead and give me a lot of add to carts, check out initiated and even one sale. So the very next day, I went ahead and left it on. As you can see, now it's performing a lot better at a two row ad, but the other two did not do so well. Let's go ahead and take a look at our testing campaign again. Let's go ahead and see if there's anything else we can go ahead and see below. So going back to our testing campaign, sorting by purchases, it seems like dog is a new interest that has been rising in the charts. As you can see, three purchases at a 3.62 row ad. Even Puppy is doing pretty good as well at a 4.2 ROAS with two purchases. So I went ahead and CBO dog the very next day. So going on to November 10th, we now have a dog CBO as well. And we also have the old CBOs from before, dog walking, dog food, etc. As you can see, I actually ended up killing dog food. It only spent three bucks that day. But since it did not do well for like two to three days already, I didn't want to go ahead and leave it on. Dog Park spent hundred bucks, got zero sales. So I'm pretty sure I went ahead and turned that off for the very next day as well. But as you can see, the dog CBO, the new one that we just introduced, is doing well now at two ROAS. Dog walking is kind of iffy. It's back to that 0.61 ROAS. 
But the very next day, let's go ahead and take a look. We definitely turn off a lot of CBOs. Now we only have dog CBO and we only have a new CBO called Puppy, which is actually the one I showed you the day before that was doing really well. So I introduced Puppy again. All right, before we go ahead and continue to start scaling this ad account, I do want to go ahead and shout out my Discord. If you don't already know, I do have a Discord. There's a link in the description below. It's called Prime Cord. It is free to join. But in my Discord, I go ahead and go through more in detail for the ad accounts that I scale up. I talk about strategies that I don't really show on YouTube. I talk about product research. I do live trainings and also AMAs every Friday. So if you are interested, go ahead and join my Discord down below. We already have a lot of members that are taking advantage of the Discord and also just learning a lot more than watching these monthly YouTube videos that I upload every single month. But I am active on there every single day. If you do have a question, it's 100% guaranteed that I'm going to go ahead and answer it if you're in the Discord. So make sure to go ahead and join the Discord down below. But that's it for my shout out. I'll see you guys there, hopefully. Um, let's go ahead and keep scaling this ad account and I'll show you exactly what happened. But as you can see, the Puppy CBO is not a CBO. Remember I showed you in the testing campaign that Puppy was also doing good as well as Dog. Well, now they're both CBOs. And as you can see, they are both profitable. 2.43 ROAS, 2.89 ROAS. Remember the other CBOs that I had like Dog Park, Dog Food, etc. Those didn't do well. Even though they did do well in the testing campaign, it doesn't always translate over to a CBO. And that's something I want you guys to remember. You don't want to go ahead and keep running a CBO if it's not working, even if it's working in the testing campaign. But the dog and puppy CBO are now doing good. And they also did good in the testing campaign, which is great. But as you can see, this was a really, really good day, totaling at 3.2 ROAS, which means we were really, really profitable. We spent around $400 to get back 1.4K in sales. Now let's go ahead and check the testing campaign again to make sure we didn't miss out on anything from so from the 6th to the 11th. Let's go ahead and sort by purchases. As you can see, now we have Puppy Dog, which is doing great. But we have a new interest that's been killing it lately. Golden Retriever at six purchases, 4.54 in ROAS. So we definitely want to go ahead and make this into a CBO as well and scale it as well. So the very next day, I went ahead. The very next day, November 12th, as you can see, we have a Golden Retriever CBO, Puppy CBO, Dog CBO, and we still have our testing campaign. We spent around $800 and got back 1.5K in sales, which means we are profitable. And also Facebook doesn't always track correctly. Anyway, it's been doing pretty good. But I also want to go ahead and tell you guys, we've been raising the budgets on some of these CBOs. So the puppy CBO is now at $200 a day and the dog CBO is at $400 a day. So let's go back all the way to the 10th because that's the first time our dog CBO did really well at a 2.32 ROAS. And we went ahead and increased it from $100 daily spend. The next day I did it two times. So I went from 100 to 200 and then the puppy CBO was brand new at $100. So basically our scaling strategy so far has been if it works in the CBO by itself, you want to go ahead and start raising budgets the very next day at around 12 a.m. your local ad account time. So the puppy CBO did good at a two plus ROAS. We are going to go ahead and move it up to a $200 a day budget. And then the dog CBO did good at a 2.89 ROAS. So we're also going to go ahead and double it to a $400 budget. So November 12th, as you can see right here, that's exactly what we did. This is $200 budget. This is 400 and the brand new CBO go to retriever starts off at hundred. So every new interest that you come out of testing campaign with, you want to start at hundred dollars. So as you can see right here, the golden retriever CBO is the one that's doing really, really well at 3.2 ROAS. Now these two aren't doing that hot anymore, puppy and dog. But it doesn't mean that one bad day means that it's done forever. Since you have background information, knowing that I did well the previous days, I want to go ahead and just leave it alone. I'm going to leave it at $400. I'm going to leave it at 200. I'm not going to touch them. Maybe it's just a bad day for it. The next day it might pick back up. But since the golden retriever CBO is doing so well, I am definitely going to go ahead and raise the budgets from 100 to $200 for the very next day. But going into the testing campaign for this one, let's go ahead and check out from six to the 12 again. Go ahead and click purchases. As you can see, we have golden retriever, puppy, dog, we have dog food up here, but remember, we tried dog food in the beginning before. It did not work, but it's keeping up with puppy, golden retriever, like stuff that are working as a CBO. Because since it's keeping up, I wanted to go ahead and try it one more time as a CBO. Just because it doesn't work in the beginning, it doesn't mean it will never work again. If it consistently keeps working in the testing campaign, you want to go ahead and try it again as a CBO later down the line. It's been like three, four days now, so let's go ahead and try it again for the very next day. As you can see, it did not do too hot that day. I was actually mistaken. I didn't leave it at $400. I actually halved it to $200. But as you can see, 
It didn't really do too hot that day at a ROAS of 1.24. That means we spent $740 for only a $900 back, which means we we're not profitable that day. But that's still completely fine. As you can see, Golden Retriever spent 100 bucks on no sales. Dog food didn't really get that many sales either. Could have been a bad day, so I didn't touch it, except for Puppy probably because I got a two ROAS. Just because every other campaign didn't do good, it doesn't mean that Puppy itself is not going to do good. So I am going to go ahead and raise the budgets on Puppy. So November 13th to going on to the 14th, I don't think I did anything but raise budgets for Puppy. And there we go. I went from $200 back to $400 for Puppy because it did well on its own. As you can see the very next day, it still did good. Almost a two ROAS. Some of these are not doing so hot. The testing campaign. So going into the testing campaign from November 15th, as you can see, the only thing left up here is German Shepherd. So I went ahead and decided to go ahead and CBO that as well because Golden Retriever is a dog breed and it still did really, really well. So I want to go ahead and try German Shepherd. It's keeping up with dog food, puppy dog walking in terms of purchases. So every next day, I believe I added German Shepherd into the mix. Let's go ahead and take a look. So yeah, now we have dog CBO, puppy CBO, golden retriever, dog food, German Shepherd testing, and also dog walking. Now, as you can see, it did really, really well that day. We spent around $2,000 to get back $4,500. We basically increased budgets on almost all of these. So going back to the 15th, so as you can see, puppy CBO at 500, it got a one ROAS. So I don't think I increased it any more than that. Let's go ahead and take a look. So I left it at 500 for puppy CBO. You can see right here. Let's go back here. So basically looking here, dog CBO, three ROAS. I probably either doubled it or made it to 500. Dog food CBO, 2.68 ROAS. I probably increased it from 200 to 400 or even 500. Basically, when you have a two plus ROAS, you can increase the budget. And that's exactly what I've been doing. That's exactly how I went from 1.4K spend in one day to the very next day, 2.1K spend. Because if it's working and it's profitable in the campaign level, you want to go ahead and start increasing budgets. But anyways, now we're basically out of this testing campaign. Now it's basically just scaling these CBOs by if it's over two ROAS, you want to increase the budget on it. Anyways, that's pretty much the blueprint to generate your first 100K in revenue just by doing interest targeting CBOs. As you can see, dog CBO, puppy CBO, German Shepherd, Golden Retriever, dog food, all of these have been able to generate me a lot of revenue just from going ahead and doing a testing campaign to see which ones work in a testing campaign and trying them out as a CBO campaign, doing three of them inside the campaign. But anyways, hope you learn a lot. I hope you go ahead and take some of these methods that you learned in this video to go ahead and scale up to your first 100K in revenue in the Shopify dropshipping store. So if you are interested in how I was able to go ahead and scale this ad account further to even 200K in revenue. Also, if you want a full case study, what the product is, what interests are, what ad views I use, how my website looked like, you should go ahead and join my Discord down below. That's where I go ahead and reveal everything about a store, how to scale it, how to test it, even letting you know exactly what the product is, what the ads look like, basically everything, full transparency on a store. So if you are interested in that, go ahead and join my Discord down below. But anyways, I hope you guys learned a lot from this video. I try to go ahead and give as much information as possible, but also trying to gatekeep some information to my Discord. So like I said, if you are interested, go to my Discord down below. But anyways, Hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully this blueprint will help you reach your first 100K in sales because it definitely helped me and a lot of people out. And I wish I had this blueprint or this information when I first started because it helps a lot. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you guys learned a lot and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.